message that we're going to speak about today is what do you create with your words? And if you have your Bibles here, please turn with me to Isaiah. In chapter 55, we're going to read a couple of verses there, and then we're just going to speak a bit about that. Um, so if you have the place, just cough once, then I know you're there. Okay. All right. Okay. So. All right. It says ho, but I would like to change that to whoa. Okay. So sometimes our lives are so busy, we must just whoa. Okay. But this ho stands for listen. Okay. Everyone who thirsts, come, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money. And without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your wages for what is not for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. This is the, the core text for today. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. For you shall go out with joy. And be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Right, so shall my word be which goes from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I send it. So it will accomplish. All right, in verse 1, um, what just stood out to me is there is a great need. Just tell the person next to you, you have a need. Right? There is a great need within the human race. It was taken from us in the Garden of Eden, and today people still yearn for it. Remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? God walked with Adam. They had a relationship where God and Adam spoke, and God gave Adam things to do. He had to name the animals. And all of a sudden, when sin came in, that relationship was severed. Because when God showed up for the relationship, where was man? Man was hiding. He was behind the trees. All right? It says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. All right? So something changed there. Something changed there. And, and I believe that the void that some of us are experiencing sometimes in our life is because of that. But you see, man made his own plan. He hid behind the trees. Okay? And sometimes we try to fill the void in our lives. We try to 
compensate for it by doing other things. We try to compensate for it with, with things that we think out ourselves. And that's why verse 1 is so awesome for me. But it says that, it actually says, you who have the void, you who hunger and thirst, you must come to God. It does not say, go to the spar, go to pick and pay and to shop right. Okay? It does not say, um, you know, there is a cost involved. You see, we think if we have got money, and if we've got good works, that we can sometimes fill that void. And that's where we are mistaken. God wants to tell us that that's what we are looking for. That void that needs to be filled can only be filled by Him and Him alone. Nothing else that we can think up or conjure up or can buy or whatever will be able to fill that void. And you know what? If we don't realize that, we're going to keep on looking to fill the void with earthly things. And um, I'm so excited this morning because... um, I've grasped some of that, that God wants to come and fill that, fill that void for me today. I hope that you do too. All right, verse 2 and 3 says, Our need for His voice cannot be bought with money, nor can it be earned through good works. You know, sometimes we try to do things to feel good about ourselves. Okay, maybe not you, I do. Okay, we, we try to do things. We give money for good causes. We, we're trying to be a good person because we believe here in the back of our minds that that will make us happy. It doesn't. All right, we're still going to have that void. We must listen carefully and attentively and then fulfillment comes. A fulfilling that fills the voids in us. A joy, a contentment. We must purposefully position ourselves to hear His voice. We must purposefully draw close to Him. Do you know that scripture that says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you? Alright? God is waiting for us. He's waiting for us to grasp this hidden And not so hidden, but sometimes difficult to understand. He's waiting for us to grasp that. You know, the prodigal son, when he when he tried to fill the void, when he when he went away, when he got his inheritance and he went to a far off land and bought himself a BMW and got some friends and drank a lot and hanged out. Okay, that's not what he did, but okay. He tried to fill the void, but then in the end he grasped that. He cannot fill the void with earthly things. He cannot fill that void with money and all these things, relationships, and by doing certain things. He can only fill the void when he returned to his father. Because he realized, he didn't realize what he had lost. And the other brother what, that was staying there, all right, he also had a void. Because when his brother returned, he's like, hmm. Now, why is Father so glad about him? And why I was, I was being polite. I was working and I was giving myself and, you know, I was here. But he also had a void. When the brother came back, he said, you've, you've never, you know, even given me something. And his father said, everything that I have is yours. He didn't even realize that he had a void. In his life, that empty space that we so desperately try to fill with things. And I'm so excited because I want you to come with me and understand that nothing on earth will be able to fill this void. And we sometimes hide behind things. We, we so desperately try to fill that void. Try to, 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 to feel good about ourselves by doing certain things. But God is making an invitation today and He says, come here. Whoa, ho, whoa, come. 
come to me because therein, in our relationship, your void will be filled. You will have fulfillment. I don't know if you want that or not, but I desperately want that. I want that fulfillment. Even in the midst of circumstances. You know, I'm, I, I've got a little, uh, uh, I won't say it's, a, it's something that's holding me back sometimes. Perfectionism. You know, if I, if I come home and the grass is not cut neatly and the kids haven't done their chores, so it means that there are business, doggy business all around and, you know, then I don't feel happy. I, I want it to be perfect and if it's perfect, if it's clear and it's cut neatly and it's watered, then I feel <sighs> I'm not always in the position to have it like that. But amidst all those things, I must find fulfillment in His Word. Those are nice things if you can have it like that. In our places of work, not everybody is doing the things that we think they should do. But if we allow that to determine how we're going to feel, we're always going to be unhappy. Because it will never be perfect. People will never be perfect. Our situations will never be perfect. And that's why Jesus makes this invitation. Come to me. Find your fulfillment with me. Then you will be able to enjoy all the other things. All right. Verse 6. Make use of every opportunity to seek the Lord and to draw near to Him. Make use of every opportunity. Every Sunday, the church just gives you two or three opportunities. All right? But you must make use of that opportunities, which, which some of us don't make use of that often. Preaching to those that are not here, obviously you made use of that opportunity today. All right? But cell groups, there are lots of opportunities that we can use to draw near, to draw in, which we don't, because we've got a social life, you know, meeting up with the guys, you know, going, doing some shopping or window shopping, all right? We've got such a priori priority twist, twist, twisted priorities, that we sometimes fill our lives up with all these other things that needs to happen, but we don't make the time to go to the water. We don't make use of those opportunities. And I don't know about you, but I want to make use of that opportunity. When I drive in my car, I want to listen to gospel music. Why? Because I'm a Jesus freak. No, because I want to make use of the opportunity to grow. I want to make use of the opportunity to meet. I want to make use of the opportunity to fill the void, to come to the waters. But we must realize that that is what we need. I can stand here and I can preach till I'm blue in the face and tell you this is what you need, but if you don't think you need it, you will not look for it. The, the whole word of God is full of invitations. Come. Come, let us sit together. Come, let us talk. Come for that relationship. It started in Genesis. Adam, where are you? Come, Adam, I'm looking for you. Because I want that intimacy. You see, that is a thing that, that we don't always realize. It was stolen from us. That intimacy, we had a void. Ever since the Garden of Eden, there was a void. In that relationship. And it was so important for God to fill that void in our lives that He sent Jesus for that restoration of the relationship so that we don't walk around with a void, trying to fulfill that void with all the other things that we are doing. Why are you doing that, Noah? Got stress. When I stress, I eat. Okay, that was in the past because we're on video now. Okay? 
all right? Why? I'm trying to fill the void. When I'm angry, I also eat. Used to. Okay. All right? I want to fill something deep there, that void, that feeling of hopelessness. I just want to, you know, feel better. But it's costing me money. And the word says, if you truly want to be satisfied, it's things that money can't buy. So that's why I'm so excited. I'm going to be fulfilled and it's not going to cost me a cent. All right? It's just going to cost me to draw in, to, to draw near to God. He is waiting. He is waiting. He is waiting for me to get that revelation. He's excited when he looks at me. And sometimes when he sees me, maybe walking across the street to a certain place to buy something, he is faithfully hoping and believing that I will get that breakthrough. And I believe it's because my wife's also praying for me. But that I will get that breakthrough in realizing Only Him, Him alone. Nothing else. Nothing. And because we don't, we say it and we think that we believe it, but it is shown in our actions. Okay? So if I really believe what I'm saying right now, it means that my life will change. And that is the thing. People can't change people. Only God can change people. So you need to want to change because you understand that it is for the better. It is for you. It's for no one else. I want to be a good husband, not because I want to please my wife. I want to be a good husband because I want that relationship with God. Do you know that your prayers can actually be hindered if you are not in um, unity with your wife? There's a scripture that says, so that your prayers will not be hindered. I want to be a good dad, not to impress people, but I want to be a good dad, so that my children say, I want what my dad has. He's got, mis he's got mistakes. He makes mistakes, but there's just that peace and that calmness that I want. All right. Isaiah 55, I'm going to read verse 7 again. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So everything begins with a thought. You think a certain way, therefore you react a certain way, therefore you are a certain way. Now what we're trying to do is, we want to say, I'm not allowed to go across the street. That is wrong. All right? But the thing is, across the street to buy some sweets, for those of you who are not on that page. All right? Okay? So I'm not allowed to smoke. I'm not allowed to, to use foul language. I'm not allowed to do this. I must go to sell. I must be perfect. You've got the wrong mindset. It is for your own benefit to stop doing all these wrong things. Therefore, we cannot judge people who do it. Can I say we must also not judge ourselves? But we must pray that they start to think differently. That God will touch their mind because if they think differently, they will react differently. They will live differently. Sometimes, we don't understand why we have to go through certain processes. My child doesn't understand sometimes why I give him a hiding. But one day, he will realize that I helped him and one day, he will thank me. 
because then his mindset will start to change. So what we are addressing this morning is God is making an invitation. He says, I know that you have a void. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're human, you have a void. That is only fulfilled in relationship with me. So that, why, that is why we must feel sorry and feel compassion for other people that don't know the Lord. We mustn't just evangelize because the church say we must do it. And the Bible says we must do it. I'm not saying don't evangelize. I'm saying trust the Lord for your mindset to change so that you can have a passion for the lost. Then will people won't have to tell you to evangelize. People won't have to tell you to do things. You will do it because your mind is renewed you think differently, and you will do differently. I was on the farm, preached there in Afrikaans. Then I had a lot to say, you know, because I wasn't nervous. Now I'm keeping it to the book because I'm a bit nervous. All right? But I had to drive past my house to get uh, the memory stick from my translator, my wife. Um, so that's why some of these words are... Okay, but anyway... So there was a guy sitting in his car across the street. He probably went to buy himself something, okay? But he was sitting in his car, and I just experienced Gen uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. And I thought, okay, when I pass him, I'm going to give that word to him. I just feel I must do it. And then when I stopped, he got into his car and he was about to leave. So I thought, ach, no, what? He's going to leave now. I'm going to look funny. So I'll, I'll just drive past. Hit the hazard sign. Stop the bucket. <coughs> Ran out. The guy was sitting in his car looking like this. Knocking the window. I say, Jeremiah 29, 11. He looks at me and says, I've got plans to prosper you. If not, <laughs> I say, yes, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's what I believe God is saying to you. Oh, thank you very much. Then he got out of his car again. I don't know if he had to buy something else because of the shock. But <laughs> the thing is, obedience. Yeah. Obedience. Immediate obedience. Do not, I will later. I will let, okay, now it's difficult. It was easier just a bit. It will get even more and more difficult. You must be obedient. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's what is expected. No. Because we must change our mindset. You know, something that, is, that really stood out. Sometimes when we have conflict with people, we want to tune them. Oh, I want to tune some people. Oh, I sometimes just lose it and I just want to shake them a bit. But I'm so challenged. You know, you wear this, this bands that say, I, I can't because I'm old and then it will. Okay, but young people, wear, people like you, wear these bands that say uh, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Would he shake someone and say, to him some disturbing words, all right? Would he wish harm on someone and say, you know, I hope you get a pain in your gluteus maximus, all right? That's not the heart of Jesus. So when people look at us and they see how we react towards our enemies, they're supposed to see that we're Christian. They're supposed to see Jesus in us. When I give my child a hiding, when I take him to the bathroom, he's supposed to see Jesus in me. He's not really seeing that if I grab him by the arm and I slip him there to the bathroom and I throw him down there and I, okay, that doesn't happen. I'm just saying, <laughs> all right, people need to see Jesus. When Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted by the enemy. He was very polite. 
when the enemy said something, Jesus answered him and gave him, a, gave him scripture, gave him perspective. He didn't lose his temper. He spoke to him in a kind way, but just give him perspective. When Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, he had a meal with him. I don't think they took, uh, took financial decisions. But after the intimacy, after spending time with Jesus, Zacchaeus started to think differently. And he just came out with a whole bag of potatoes and he said, listen, I'm, I'm a cheater. I've cheated people out of their money, but I'm just going to give it back. Jesus didn't call him out from the tree and say, you sinner, you're a cheater with money. I will get you from that tree and I will make you change your ways. No, he said, hey, get down from the tree. I'm going to have lunch with you. All right, begin to think differently and act differently. Turn back to God. He forgives. He is merciful and wants to forgive. He is waiting you to seek Him. So I know I'm preaching to the wrong crowd. And you're supposed to be okay, all of you. But maybe there's one situation in your life where you are struggling to surrender. Maybe you're hiding it behind the tree like Adam did. And maybe you're hiding your girl also behind the tree like Adam did. Okay? Maybe you're keeping something in the dark because you're afraid of what's going to happen. So I want to invite you today. Bring it before the Lord. Just imagine. I can just imagine that young man deciding to turn back to his father, knowing what he has lost in the relationship with his father, the... the um, the prodigal son, wanting back that relationship which he had, where he, where, he, where he felt at home. And he said, I don't care if I'm there, just there as a servant. I just want to be in my father's house again. I imagine that young man coming, and I imagine the father, the father running. The Bible says he was still a far way off. He was still very far away. Are you feeling far away today? I've got news for you. Jesus is a champion runner. The Father is a champion runner. You just have to take two steps or one step. And the word says he'll come running for you. In verse 8 and 9, I'm just going to read that for us. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are... Uh, so are my ways higher than your ways and, your th and my thoughts than your thoughts. My secretary wrote down, We are still many times thinking and walking in a wrong way, but God wants to teach us how to think and walk in His ways. See, I was always thought this thing of, come all of you who are we uh, weary, come to the waters. I thought it was for pure, poor people, you know. You know, come to church, we'll hand you something. Yeah. I always thought that. I was so wrong. Huh? Can I be so wrong? It's an invitation to receive that from God which you cannot buy. Not with all the money in the world. You cannot. It's an invitation to just come receive that because it's the only place where you can find it. In His presence. Verse 10 and 11, when we change our thought patterns and the way that we walk according to God's ways, we will realize the power in His Word and we will start to talk differently. Because the words that He speaks is alive and powerful and not empty. We are sowing seeds with our words. If I hear somebody using fire language and I tell foul, foul, if somebody speaks chicken, if somebody is using foul language, okay, if somebody speaks chicken and I tell them to stop, that person might stop, but tomorrow he will still continue. But if that person has got a revelation of why he must stop, 
he will stop. If I have the revelation why I can't eat steak the whole time and why I must eat some of my wife's tuna slide, tuna salad, I will start eating that salad without her having to force me and look at me and look at the kids and just throwing me the eye and saying, the kids has got this tuna slide, this tuna salad, and they're looking at you, you better eat yours. <laughs> you know, she says that whole sentence in just one look. And then she gives me more. And then I must eat it. But if I have the revelation why she wants me to eat it, that she wants me to be healthy, that she wants me the best for me, that she wants me to have energy, then I will start choosing it. And sometimes we look at the Word of God and we say, Oh, it's all these laws and things, and we will never make it, and what, and what, and what, and all these things. But if we understand, and we got a passion for the word, and we understand these things, not that we understand everything, but we get a revelation of why God is saying this in the word. Why out of all the books... This one, if we get that revelation, we will start reading it. Nobody will tell us, you must read your Bible. We will read it. It will fall apart. We will know where every scripture is. We must, I can tell you to do that but because I know it's good for you, like me eating my tuna salad. But you will not believe me unless you know why. So that's why I'm very excited. But it seems to me like, I'm not excited enough. Okay, so I'll go on. All right. Verse 12. When we change our lifestyles to embrace God's ways and apply His word in our lives, we will experience His joy and we will experience His peace in our decisions. You can just write down Ephesians 4, verse 6 and 7. I'm going to read it. If I can find it. I don't think my secretary had this one right. No, she didn't. Maybe it's Philippians, yeah. Ooh, now I must just do what Jesus would have done. Huh? I mustn't go home and tell her, what? What did you do? I think it's Philippians. I know it's Philippians, sorry. It, just go there. Philippians 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and you will receive everything that you want and all your requests. And does it say that? Uh, you see, you didn't turn with me to that scripture. Uh, it doesn't say that. But it, what, it, what does it say? It says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. So speaking about your thought pattern, it says that if you seek God and you make all these things known to Him, even though you might not receive all these things that you ask for, is peace. Will guard your heart and your mind. Is peace. Sometimes, you know, we think that you know, if we're Christian, nothing ever bad happens. Mm. Two of you found out the hard way that stuff still happens. It does. Okay, but in those situations, in all those things, His peace will be there. His peace will be there, and that is my prayer. In verse 13 of Isaiah 55, it says, 
Um, now I've lost my page there. What does it say in, in, in 55, verse 13? What does it say? All right, it's talking about trees. And it says, instead of all those other trees growing, found it, instead of the thorn shall come up a cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come up a myrtle tree, and the Lord, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Remember I said a while back that your words that you speak are like seeds. Alright? So you've spoken the wrong type of language because of your wrong mindset, because of not spending enough time, or a person, not you, all right, and now you're 23, 24, 30, 31, 40, and all of a the sudden there's these big trees coming up, and you don't know where they come from, all of a sudden it's this huge thing that's in your life, and you don't know what happened, okay, and then we start to blame others, also from Genesis, Adam said no, it was Eve, Eve said no, it was the snake, all right? Who took the fruit? And who ate it? See, we must take responsibility for our words, but it says now that God will forgive us, and instead of those trees, new trees will come up. But I want to plead with you to start today to sow the correct seeds so that the right trees will be able to come up. And we trust God together that the bad trees will be uprooted. And we start from today speaking seeds, speaking what God is saying. Not because Pastor Emil preached it and it was in, it was in his sermon. We start to challenge our mindset. We change our mindset. And because our mindset is, is going to change. By the grace of God, our actions will start to change and our words will start to change. And when those things are in place, then we will, the right, the correct trees will come up. So it's not a thing of you will, you will not. But it is also a thing of you will, you will not. Because when a child is small, you can't explain to him. You must more discipline him. But when he's big, the same rules apply. But now because he understands the rules, he obeys them. And I just realized, I got another revelation right now. That's how we are. You know, it says everywhere it says that the Ten Commandments were given. And now people say, okay, but now it's fallen away because Jesus came. Because Jesus came, we have a living relationship. So we will not disobey the Ten Commandments because we've got relationship. We understand now why. In the, in, in the previous thing, the people didn't understand. So they had to be taught, you may not do this. You may not do this. You may not do this. But today, that, that law still applies. All right? But it is alive inside of us because now we understand. We've got his thoughts. So now we know I shouldn't covet my neighbor's wife and things that belong to him. I should not murder people because it's written in our hearts. Does it make sense? So we must stop seeing the word of God as a set of rules. We must draw in, let our minds be renewed and transformed, and we will start to want to live like this. We will start using this manual for everything in our lives. We will start using it and say, Lord, what are you saying? Jesus, how would you have handled it? Jesus, how must I handle this difficult situation at work with this boss of mine that is 
just give me a scripture. Then you get the scripture of Zacchaeus. Okay, so I must maybe I must just invite him for, for dinner. But I don't want to. I don't like him. And his wife is also strange. So, no. God will give us the strategies. God will give us the opportunities. And that's why I'm excited this morning. Because from now on, I'm trusting the Lord to make the right decisions. To uproot all those trees that I've planted with words that I've spoken in the past. And to trust God for His living word. Living seeds that will come. Trees that will grow in my life. Let's just close our eyes. Father God, thank you for the amazing, amazing, amazing word. Thank you, Father, that, the, that it says that your word is living and active. Father, and we can see that even today, Father, your word still is changing and challenging our lives. Father, I pray for everybody that is sitting here where there might be a thing of death that was spoken in so many situations. Father, when we, when we just look around us, when we look at the news, when we look at the, the things that are going on, it's so easy for us to think the wrong thoughts. It's so easy for us to have the wrong conversations with the wrong people at the wrong times. It's so easy. But I pray, Father God, that you will touch each and every one this morning that says, I've got a void. I've got a void and it needs to be filled. I pray that you will touch each and every one reaching out to you right now. Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come. I pray that they will draw near to you and that you will draw near to to, to them. Father, thank you for this window of opportunity. I pray, Father, that where your word says here in Isaiah that we must seek you while you may be found. We must call on you while you are near. I pray that we will make use of every opportunity to grow. Every opportunity to hear your voice, to get that fulfillment and that peace that transcends all understanding. Father, forgive us in the past for wrong mindsets that if we are Christian, nothing ever bad will happen and we're just going to have an awesome a life full of joy the whole time. Father, thank you that we know that the reality is it's not always like that. But even in the midst of our challenging situations, we can have your peace that transcends all understanding. We can guard our hearts. We can guard our minds. And we can speak forth life. Even in the midst of the storm, we can address the storm. Father, help us to love our enemies, to be kind to them, even though they wrong us, even though they continue to wrong us, even though they hurt us, I pray that, that we will show them love, we will show them grace. And Father, above all, I pray that Today, when we hear the message of come to me, all those who are thirsty, come and buy my, uh, wine and milk without money and without cost, that we will grab hold of that opportunity today, Father God. That we will grab hold of it and with both hands and never let go. I pray that we will not be legalistic, hold on to the law, but that we will be relational, Father God. And that we will meet with you. That we will show up for every appointment. That we will grab hold of every opportunity. Father, to enter into. To be with you. And that our lives will change forever. Thank you that we will never be the same again. I pray that we will build on this revelation, Father God. I pray that we will build on the rock, Jesus Christ. Thank you for mindsets. Wrong mindsets that, that, that are breaking right now. The chains that are falling off right now. Thank you for your living word that will come in. Thank you for the freedom that will come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you for that. And we pray that you will protect and guide.
and that you will give us your peace that transcends all understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen.